Very well, ladies and gentlemen, this episode we are only going to talk about one important uh, transfer that might, uh, you know, uh, we might definitely get to know. I, I really just want to know only for the sake of uh, uh, knowing a lot of transfers. And this is especially I would want to track it in January. And that is Andre Onana. But more importantly, before talking about Andre Onana, what happens to Leno? What is exactly the stance of uh, Inter Milan? Well, apparently it could be it could be a bigger stumbling block for Arsenal to offload burnt Leno. Although, of course, I'm pretty much sure that uh, you know Edu Gaspar will definitely try to find a club for burnt Leno if he does not find it fit to offer Leno a new contract. But why would Leno would want to stay at Arsenal to be number two? That does not make any sense. But for now, let's talk about Martin Odegaard. So uh, he might be the big game changer, uh, as we can think of it would be. But uh, Let's talk about Mikel Arteta, what he has to say about uh, Martin Odegaard. He says, I think he can decide football matches and big football matches. And it did that last year. Um, taking the ball in moments where others probably refuse to, but as well with his attitude, his rhythm and the way he presses and puts people under pressure. Of course, I'm pretty much sure Mikel Arteta can wax a big lyrical about uh, uh, Martin Odegaard. But let's talk about some other aspects of Arsenal's gameplay. Well, Mikel Arteta was asked about uh, Granit Xhaka, whether he's going to be back. He says he came back and he was fine because he looks really looks after himself. So it looks like uh, most probably I think you could see Granit Xhaka start at the North London Derby. But I asked you guys to comment and let me know what you guys think about should Granit Xhaka start the North London Derby. You guys have not commented and you know, that makes me a little furious as to why you guys are not commenting, man. Come on and let me know what you guys really believe. Should Granit Xhaka start... Uh, uh, in the North London derby and I've got a real opinion so right so let's talk about uh, Tomiyasu Tomiyasu spoke about his debut he says my the day of my debut was amazing it was a special day for me because it was my big dream to play in the Premier League especially to do that at Emirates Stadium it was just wonderful I can tell you that I've never heard a sound like that before never in my life it was amazing for me I could hear it from the moment we walked onto the pitch. Then every time when I got the ball or played the ball, I could hear the noise. Then, of course, the goal as well. So I think, you know, that was the best part, of course, when he has his own chant. My God. Oh, wow. Fans would love him. Fans would really love him. Of course, he's a lovable character. Let's, let's not uh, forget that as well. But moving on, let's talk about David Seaman. David says that I think Ramsdale is now looking like he's the number one goalkeeper. I've been impressed with him. His performances have been positive. He looked really confident and he's not shown any, any nerves at all. With two wins, you're not going to replace your goalkeeper, are you? <laughs> yes, um, I 100% I agree with this. Like, of course, two, two wins. You, you know that uh, he's one of, one of the confident players. Why would you even think of, you know, uh, changing him? But let's talk about Inter Milan, how they have frustrated Arsenal by switching their interest in Burnt Leno, of course, they were supposed to, uh, they're really supposed to replace, uh, you know, Samir Handanovic on goal at some point of time and Burnt Leno was the kind of player that they were looking for. So, Tudor Sport claimed that Inter Milan could look to Leno as a long-term replacement for Samir Handanovic. Uh, but here's the thing, the problem is that it looks unlikely as Nera Zuri have identified a new target and that is none other than Andre Onana. Ajax stopper Andre Onana was linked to the move to Arsenal in the early stages of the previous summer transfer window and it could have been done for around £7 million but um, well nobody wanted for uh, Onana. To be fair nobody wanted to pay that if you're getting someone for free if you just wait for some months why would you want to pay even, even, a, even something? Uh, to the club so Onana stays and of course even if you buy him he's not available to play right away so yeah I think that's that that money is definitely down the drains but more importantly it depends if Arsenal pay that much uh, media will definitely make a big 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 mess a big meal out of it but if it's Manchester United no way that is like the best deal in the transfer history so for now I'm pretty much sure or oh, oh, the Onana thing is definitely uh, I think Let's move on. Like, there's no one on at Arsenal right now. So let's talk about Anthony Martial. Arsenal and Manchester United fans have responded uh, to Anthony Martial going to Arsenal or, or Tottenham, whatever. So with the signing of Cristiano Ronaldo, it looks like a lots of changes that must happen at Old Trafford. So here's what certain Manchester United fans or, or 
and Arsenal fans have reacted to it. So let's talk about Arsenal fans. So uh, uh, one of the Arsenal fans says, Martial is 25 and entering his peak. He's lost his way at United and sometimes players need a fresh start. Talented footballer and nothing like Arsenal have. Another one says, if uh, Arsenal sell Lacazette, I would like them to go and get Martial. 45 million is good business. 45 million for Martial is good business, okay. Another one says, remember how badly Arsene Wenger wanted Martial before he joined Man U. There's a player in there, I'll take him at Arsenal. Other Arsenal supporters on Twitter were less impressed though. Um, so, uh, uh, says that three years too late, lol, now mate, Spurs can have him. Another one said, it feels like Martial to Arsenal have been, has been inevitable for a while. Another one said, all I'm gonna say uh, is those links to Martial better not be true, Arsenal. So, so, so it was a mixed reactions. I mean, some sort of fan, some uh, um, some fans really wanted uh, Anthony Martial to come to Arsenal because they still believe that he is an exciting prospect at 25 years of age. I'm pretty much sure uh, he's not grown as as a footballer at all the way he should have. Uh, you know, um, when he bursted onto the scene, but even to call him bursted onto the scene, yeah, I have my doubts with that. So let's talk about Jamie Carragher. He agrees with Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta on one key aspect at the North London derby. Carragher has agreed that Mikel Arteta that more is at stake ahead of this week's, this weekend's North London derby. So here's what he actually, uh, it's not just three points, it's something more. So writing his column for Telegraph, the Sky Sport pundit said that what is at stake is something more important to their fans, hope and trust. Nothing builds or erodes like that, like a derby, derby win or defeat. So that is the whole story. Even Mikel Arteta also spoke spoke about um, you know how important the North London derby is, and that W will not only uh, uh, you know uh, <clears throat> it will make a different statement and probably a statement that uh, Arsenal would have made in the first three games at least by now but more importantly this win is definitely going to put down tottenham and will definitely lift arsenal on the uh, on the table but it also depends on a lot of other play a lot of, a lot of other clubs also winning and losing to help arsenal uh, get into the first half of the table that has been a big task for now but let's talk about uh, Mikel Arteta has been told to attack two tottenham players that could definitely be uh useful for Mikel Arteta as a tactic Alan Smith has instructed Mikel Arteta to target Emerson Royal and Christian Romero as he claims, as he aims to claim victory in the North London derby. So talking to to uh, Sky Sports, Alan Smith says, it's going to be interesting to see Arsenal's attack against Tottenham's defence. Given those creative players and if Arsenal can get Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang moving and making good runs and playing with confidence, Tottenham have got a couple of new boys in Emerson Royal and Christian Romero and that might be an area that Arsenal can exploit, perhaps down the left flank. Just like Spurs, that's the strength of for Arsenal. The creative players they've got, they've got energy, ideas, real talent. Yeah. So it, it could be Romero Emerson. Well, let's see what Arsenal will target. That's the bigger question. And hopefully, hopefully Arsenal get all the three points. But let's talk about West Ham because it could be that, that staying at London could actually tempt and give a potential destination for Alex Lacazette. Emilio Galantini has uh, come up with a report that as per 90 minutes, uh, West Ham could sign Alex Lacazette with a forward with a player looking likely to leave in the coming months. Now, one thing is pretty much clear that uh, if, if West Ham want to sign him, West Ham don't generally pay a good amount of salary. So if Lacazette is looking for a downgrade in terms of salary, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it, but going to West Ham right now, I think I think uh, I'm pretty much sure Alex Lacazette would want to go to a club that is actually playing Champions League football. Not only that, I think uh, at least they're in a very good, decent position to actually you know, try to win the Champions League or probably win bigger trophies. And West Ham are on course of getting Champions League football. Probably they're really high flying uh, to a lot of games that you would expect Arsenal to lose in the champ in the in the Premier League. So. It's a very exciting team, but I'm pretty much sure Alex Lacazette would not, should not actually, uh, where he is at his career, I'm pretty much sure he would look at a club that is consistently winning. But let's talk about Edwin van der Sar's uh, truth over contract. So let's talk about what he had to say. Well, Onana opened up about the situation at Ajax and attempts to get a new contract. So Edwin van der Sar and... Uh, Okay, 
So uh, Peter Bosch, Onana could go next. He, he opened up. He actually, Onana could not go to Olympic Lyon. They were supposed to buy him, but Peter Bosch actually could not find an agreement. And Onana also had talks with Nice. Now he, uh, he also said that there are 15 clubs that want me on a free transfer in the summer of 2022. Rumors that I already have an agreement with another club are not true. Isn't it logical that I first offer Ajax the chance to start the conversation? Albert Botins will soon be coming to Amsterdam and then I'll hear about it. I just want to focus on my return, but anything is possible. Let Ajax and my agent quickly sit down and see what happens. So more importantly, he could actually sign a new contract with Ajax. You never know. You never know. I think uh, for the fact that nobody wants to pay anything for him, that is the bigger question. So with this, I'd like to end this episode. Let me know in the comments, would you still want Onana to join Arsenal? You've seen Ramsey, right? Let's see what you believe in. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one.